telling us that this is something that's a combination of an arithmetic and a geometric. That's like super fortunate because most, most of the time they don't even tell us. We just have to like guess or something. So um, let's see what we did here. It says here, the following sequence or combination of arithmetic and geometric. So obviously the combination is always going to be explicit because the two different sequences, you'll just have one after the other. Like here, the 39 and the 15, that's going to form your one sequence. The three, six, and the 12, that's going to form your other sequence. Three, six, and the 12, perfect. So with this being said, right, um, you can already see that you just have to check what, which one has a common difference, which one has a common ratio. So here it looks like we're just multiplying by two all the time. So this one clearly is the geometric one here. It looks like we're adding six all the time, plus six, plus six. Okay, perfect. Now they're saying, write down the next two terms. That one is not gonna be an issue because the next two terms, it's all based on, you see from the 15 here, we know that if you add a six there, you would have a 21. And then for the 12, if you multiply by two, we know that you would have a 24 over there. Perfect. So next two terms is not an issue. But for five marks now, they're asking us to calculate T52 minus T51. So the only issue, the only thing to, to take note of with this kind of equation is the T52 and the T51 that they're referring to is from this original sequence. Because in this original sequence, right, you have to remember there's a T1 here, there's a T2, there's a T3 going on and on and on and on. You see, there's like one here, two here, three here, four, five, six, seven, eight, going on and on and on. So somewhere along the lines, you're gonna have term 51 and you're going to have term 52. We don't know what term 51 is. We don't know what term 52 is, but then they want us to take term 52 and subtract term 51. So already just by looking at how our equation is set up, right? You can already see that looking at the arithmetic sequence, let me make sure this is clear. This is the arithmetic, arith Arithmetic. Looking at the arithmetic sequence, right? It is clearly in the arithmetic sequence takes um, is basically in the positions that are odd. You see, position number one, position number three, position number five, position number seven. So automatically, position number fifty-one is going to come out from the arithmetic sequence. And then the rest of the terms now, which are in position number two, four, six, going on to like 52, those ones are going to be part of the geometric sequence, you see. So let's just put here. This one is going to be is going to come out from the geometric sequence. So what we just need to now do, which is not going to be too crazy, is we just need to think to ourselves, okay, fine. From these two sequences individually, right? We're clearly seeing that term number one, term number two, term number three, going on and on and on. Um, we need to see how we can link it to this original one, you see, of which that's not gonna be too difficult. And here's why. You can already see that every second term here is from the geometric sequence. That's one thing we can already see. Every second term here is from the geometric sequence. So looking at the geometric sequence, I mean, something that's in position number 52 for the original sequence is technically going to be in position 26, if you're just considering the geometric sequence alone. Because look at it, this is in position number one for the geometric sequence. This is in position number two. This is in position number three. This is in position number four. So obviously this would be in position number 26. You can even just look at how the trend is going. This is in two, right? But it's at position number one. This is in four, but it's in position number two. This is in six, but it's in position number three, going on and on and on. So this is gonna be in position 52 for the original sequence, but it is actually position number 26 for the geometric sequence. 
And that same analogy, you want to use it for the arithmetic sequence. It's going to be the exact same thing because these are 52 values in total, but then the ones that make up the arithmetic sequence, it is just going to be 26 as well. So already you know that somewhere here, there's something in position number 26. So what is in position number 26 for the arithmetic sequence here, this is, in, this is what's in position 51 for the original one. What's in position 26 for the geometric here, this is what's in position 52 for the original one. So without making too much of a mess of this question, right? All we have to do is for this arithmetic sequence, let's work out what's in position 26, get that answer. For this geometric sequence, let's also work out what is in position 26, get that answer. And then those two answers will represent what should go here and what should go over there. So let us do it. So here, this is just an arithmetic sequence. So we know that to get something in position 26, we just have to use the general term. Tn is equal to a plus n minus one d. So a here is a three, n is a 26, and then d, what is d? d is the common difference, right, which is a six. There we go. So that's what we're gonna do for the arithmetic. For the geometric, we do the same, but we use the formula for a geometric sequence. A here is a three, R, we see it's a two, N is 26. So T26, and then here, let's see, T26. And then let us put all this into the calculator. And I'm thinking, where in the world is my calculator? That's like, yo, it is so far. So let me just try and do this quickly. So it's like 25 times six plus three. I'm getting 153 here. So let's put here 153. And then here, yo, now this one is gonna be a bit tricky. What is two to the power 25? Yo, this one is super tricky. Let me just get a calculator so that we can do what we need to do. Calculator, where are you? I hope I haven't lost my calculator. Oh, there it is, there it is, I found it. Okay, yeah. So in the second equation, in the second equation, let's see here, this is, oh, snap, sorry. I moved away from someone that needs to be hearing me. So in the second equation, it's just two to the power of 26 minus one, and then multiply that by three. Yo, that's a huge number, like goodness. Yes, man, yes, like, mm -mm. this number looks illegal. But anyways, let's just do it again so that we can make sure that we definitely have the correct number. So it's a huge number for the second one, right? It's like, what is it? I'll just write it out and then I'll say it just now. It's like one here, zero, zero, six, six. And then there's like three there, two, nine, six, two, nine, six. Wow, what a wow. Anyways, so let's see, this is like three, three. So this is like a hundred million. 663,296. Okay, so clearly this is T52, this is T51, like we said. So we already know that therefore, T52 minus T51 is gonna be equal to 1006-3296 minus 153. And then, Let's see here what we're gonna put in the calculator. That value minus that. Oh, obviously another big number. A hundred million six hundred and sixty-three thousand one hundred and forty-three. There we go. There we go. There we go. So that will be that for this question. I don't know if there's like a memo for this question where we can double check, but I think with what we did, this should be fine. This is a bit realistic because remember, these numbers are doubling, you know, and things that double go up very fast, you see. So you can imagine there's like three, right? Times three times two, you know, that's six. And then times two, that's 12. And then if you keep pressing equal to, I mean, like if you do that 26 times, you are definitely at some point getting this very big number over there. So it's definitely possible. 
So that's that for today, or rather also that's that for this question. So if there are any questions on this question, you can ask. If they are not, then that is that.